Hey everyone, I'm Nicole Guillaume with Guiding Echoes, the channel that encourages you to discover the wisdom of your soul. And today I am back with another pick a card reading. In this pick a card reading, we are asking the question, what do you need to focus on right now? So in order to answer that question, I have set out three different piles and all you have to do is use your intuition to choose the pile that calls to you. Now you may notice that one of the piles themselves seem to resonate with you or maybe one of the stones on top does the trick. So you'll see we've got a green heart, a white, or I'm sorry, a clear quartz stone, and then also a pink quartz heart. So just choose the pile that calls out to you and you can look at the timestamp in the description area for each pile and that way you can go ahead and skip ahead to the pile that calls to you. So let's go ahead and dive in and we're going to get started with group one. Okay, group one, let's go ahead and see what your cards have to say. So the very first card I have for you is play. The second card I have for you is inspiration. And the third card I have for you is love. So as I'm focusing on this and we're asking the cards what you need to focus on, I think the answer is clear. You need to focus on the things that bring you inspiration. Because when you are inspired to take action, a lot of times that inspiration feels like play, doesn't it? And when you feel inspired to take some type of action, you usually end up loving the steps that you have to go through. So as I'm looking through these cards, one of the things I'm reminded of is that when we set a goal, when we are driving towards something, we often have a hard time accomplishing it because we may be in love with the idea of achieving that goal. We don't necessarily like the steps it takes to get to that goal. So think about whether you are wanting to hit a financial goal. Maybe there is a certain health and fitness goal that you want to reach. These are all good things. But if you're not in love with the process, with the system that will get you there, then it can be kind of discouraging sometimes. So you want to find a way to make the process fun. How can you make it a game? How can you make it seem more playful? Also do your best to stay inspired. So maybe this means that you're reading inspirational books or listening to podcasts that really get you excited about this goal that you're moving towards and about the steps you're taking to get there. And of course, there's also love. Fall in love with the process and this is going to propel you forward. Now let's go ahead and take a look at your tarot cards to see what is happening there. So the first card I have for you is the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles shows this woman who is reaping a harvest. So this tells me that you are in the season of benefiting from your actions. So whatever it is that you've been doing, whatever steps you've been taking towards your goal, you're starting to see the fruits of your labor manifest. And it may not be happening all at once. It may be happening in little bits and pieces, but it is happening. So we see right here that you are definitely starting to reap the rewards. And I think for many of you, it, you're at the beginning part of that. You're at the beginning stage. The next card I have for you is the Magician. This is actually one of my favorite cards in tarot to focus on when I want to manifest something. So the Magician reminds us that we have all of the tools necessary in order to bring forth what it is that we desire in our lives. And the Magician is such a powerful archetype because he uses his thoughts, his focus, his behaviors, and actual physical items to bring forth what he wants to manifest. So whenever I see this card, it is a reminder to maybe do some type of ritual, to do some type of a spell, to really focus on what it is that I want. And when I talk about a ritual, and when I talk about a spell, this could be something as simple as writing down your goals each day, reminding yourself of how you want to accomplish them. It could be creating a vision board or it can be lighting a candle and focusing all of your energy on that candle as you think about what it is that you desire to bring into your life. So this is about setting the intention, 
knowing that you have the tools, using all of the resources available to you in order to meet that goal. The next card I have for you is the Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles is about mastery. It means that you are an expert at something. And so as you're going through this transition, whatever it is you're manifesting group number one, I want you to think of yourself as a master of this already. So maybe you're learning how to play the piano. Maybe you're learning a new skill. Maybe you're diving towards a goal that you've never been after before. I want you to think to yourself and ask yourself, how would I behave if I had already mastered this? How would I behave if I was an expert at this? Because your thought process would be different. Your thought process would be completely different. If you were already ripped, you know, if, you, if that was your goal to be ripped at the gym, you'd have a different mindset as someone who's already ripped versus somebody who's just getting started. So think about that. What would your thoughts be if you had already mastered this thing? The other thing that I see in this card is we were talking about the process and making it fun. I feel like that is also coming through in this card as well because they're creating something, they're painting. And this looks to me like a lot of fun. It's bright, there's these different colors and they're looking at it kind of critically. Hmm, like do we like where, do we like the placement of those pentacles? Do we need to add a different color? You know, they're thinking it through in this card, but I feel like there's still that element of fun. There's creativity involved. And so think of the different ways that you can create as an expert and as a master of your own life. The other thing that comes through to me in this card is teamwork. So you may want to figure out if this is a goal that's best for you to go after on your own, or if you can maybe enlist some help. Now you're all working on different things right now. Everyone watching this is working on something a little different. And so for some of you, I very much feel like it's best for you to go this alone, like to keep your manifestation to yourself, to keep that energy to yourself. But for others, I feel like, maybe you would do better if you did have one or two people on your side. And these people may not necessarily be going after the same goal as you, but maybe they're your cheerleaders. Maybe they're the people you talk to when you get distressed or you feel like giving up. And they're the people who are like, you got this, you can do this. Like, this is absolutely amazing. Are you kidding me? And then also, as I'm speaking on this, I feel like some of you are possibly in need of a mentor. So maybe as a beginner, this card is advising you to find an expert, to find a master, and to follow that person's advice, at least the parts that resonate. So a lot of information coming from this card. But what I love about all these different forms of advice is that it is showing you how you can stay focused on what it is you want to manifest, okay? So just keep that in mind. So figure out which of those resonates best with you and then, um, and then take action. The next card I have for you is the Four of Pentacles. And this card is a little interesting because there's, whenever I see this card, it doesn't matter which deck it's in, it always has this element of heaviness to it. Like something needs to be protected. And I feel like that's what's happening in this, in this reading. I feel like it's saying you need to protect this goal. You need to protect what it is you want to manifest. And the way we protect things is by being mindful of who we're sharing our goals with. It's a being mindful of maybe what we need to keep private, what we need to keep a secret and what we can and the information we can share with other people. So I feel like for for many of you, when it comes to this card, it's saying you have to protect this goal. You have to protect this purpose because this is a part of you. This is something that once it manifests in full bloom, it's going to be so important and so precious to you. So remember how precious this is because this is a treasure. What you're working on is a treasure. It's the treasure of your heart. It deserves to be protected. So if that means that you need to be secretive, by all means, be secretive. But definitely be protective of who you're sharing this information with and who you're bringing along on this journey. The next card I have for you is the Queen of Cups and she's in reverse. So that's a little interesting. And what's interesting is as I'm tuning into this card, there's a part of me that wants to turn it right side up, but I also feel like it needs to stay upside down. And so as I'm tuning into this, whether it's right side up or upside down, 
What's interesting is I'm getting the feeling that this is representing balance. This is a balance of energy. And so what I mean by that is there's going to be times when you need to, of course, give of yourself. And there's other times when you're going to have to fill yourself up. And I feel like this came up in reverse because when she's right side up, she's giving, right? She's she's giving water back into the ocean, it looks like. So she's got this shell. She's standing over the, the water. I'd imagine she's about to pour the water back in to this ocean. In reverse, she's probably taking from the ocean for herself. And so as I'm looking at this card and looking at it in reverse, I feel like that's what this is saying to you. Like you're, you need a lot of energy for what it is that you're manifesting. So you may require more alone time than usual, but really be mindful of what it is that you need in order to fill you up. And what I also like about the Queen of Cups having come up the way that she did with the cut with the cards that she did is that I don't feel like this is telling you to isolate. It's definitely not saying that you're being moody or you're being inconsiderate. There's nothing like that going on. Because sometimes when the Queen of Cups shows up in reverse, it means she's sad or she's moody or whatever. It's not the case in this one. In this, it's about just receiving, giving yourself permission to receive what it is that you need to feel whole so that you have the energy to go after what you're manifesting. So just keep that in mind. And the balance part is that as you receive, you're also able to give, right? So I feel so many of you are actually going to be very balanced. I feel <laughs> as I look at these cards, I'm actually really excited for you because I feel that what you're manifesting what you're focused on and what it is you're wanting to bring into your reality is, I want to say it's right around the corner, but that's not even true. It's already popping up, guys. It's already taking form for you. It's already taking shape. So I would, I would really encourage you to look for the fruit of your labor. Look for the signs. Look for the synchronicities. And when you find them, hold them close to you, protect them, write down the synchronicities that you're getting, write down the little, I want to say the tidbits, the nuggets, the Easter eggs that you're getting, the reminders that these things are showing up for you, that signs are showing up to you for you that validate that your goal is being accomplished. Because when we write them down, when we get discouraged, we can go back and look at what we wrote and that might inspire us again. That might motivate us again. It reminds us that the action we take matters, that the thoughts that we hold in our head absolutely matter. That's it for the tarot cards. And I do have a few more cards for you. So let's go ahead and see what those cards are. Um, so the first card I have for you is Priestess and it says, how are you being called to step up and lead? So some of you are going after a position of leadership. This may be that you are stepping it up as a leader in your community. Could be that you are starting some type of a business. Could even be that you're a role model in your family to your kids. So it's asking how can you or how are you being called to step up and lead? And here's the thing to remember is that we all lead by example. We all lead by example. So remember in this card, I was saying, what would an expert do? How would an expert think about this situation? What thoughts would you have if you'd already mastered it? Start behaving that way. Start acting that way. Because in that way, you're setting up the signs for success, right? You're stepping it up for other people. You're leading and you're leading them to success. So many times what I find is that people accidentally set themselves up for failure. And if people are watching you and if they're following your lead, guess what? You're leading them to failure too. And that's obviously not what we want, right? That's that's not our goal. <laughs> that is not our intention. So think about again, how can you step it up? How can you be a better leader? And I believe that leading from the heart is the best way to lead. And of course, we have to think things through. You know, we have to make wise decisions. But here's the thing is when you lead from your heart, you're leading from compassion. You're leading from vision. You're leading from kindness. You're leading out of love. 
And one of the things that I learned earlier this year is that as a business owner and as a spiritual teacher, I sometimes get overwhelmed by the amount of responsibility that's on my shoulders when it comes to running Guiding Echoes, but also with the responsibility required to um, you know, connect with, with you guys when I get emails and comments and whatnot. And sometimes I can't respond to all of them. And so what I had to do was start asking myself, how would I handle this if I was coming from a place of love, love for myself, love for the universe, love for everyone involved? How would that look like if I was operating out of love instead of fear, out of love instead of stress? And when you form that question and when you're truly curious about it and you really want the answer, the answer comes up. So allow love to lead you. Allow love to answer that question for you. So again, the question is, how would I handle this situation if I was in the energy of love? And when you do that, the energy of love swoops you up, it hugs you, it swallows you up, and from there, the answer is revealed. And that's how you can be a good, loving, compassionate leader. Also, just I feel like I need to put this out there. Sometimes a good, loving, compassionate leader does have to stand up and fight. <laughs> and it's out of love and it's out of compassion for victims or the people that we want to protect that we need to stand up and kind of show our claws and bare our teeth. Um, a lot of people think that if you are a good, loving leader, that means you're a doormat. That's not true. If you're a good, loving leader, you're going to stand up for your community in any way that you need to. And sometimes that means getting a little scary, right? means getting in, in touch with our dark side, but for good reasons. All right, moving on. <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to say that, but someone out there needed to hear it. Um, the next card I have for you is the crumbling. And it says, what are you clinging on to? Very interesting. So as we're tuning into this card, I feel like it's asking you, what are you clinging on to both in a good sense and a bad sense? Because there's good things you're clinging on to as well. And the good things bring us a sense of serenity, of peace, of joy, of love, of purpose, of grounding. Those are the good things to cling on to. But then <laughs> we have those other thoughts, those other behaviors that are maybe self-sabotaging, and those may not be as good. So really take a moment to analyze what you're clinging on to and what you need to let go of. All right, guys, last card for pile number one for the green heart pile. And it says transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing. And as I'm looking at this card, what I'm really drawn to is the aura around her, her head. There's this knowing, there's this knowing that she has, she knows that things are working out for her favor. And she just has this awareness. And look at this, like, look at this confidence. Look at that calmness. That is, oh, man, that's a good energy to borrow right there. That's a good energy to be in, to create because she's not rushing. She's not stressed. She's focused. She's calm. She's confident. She's aware. She knows that what she wants is coming to her. She knows that she's already taken action. She can rest. And then tomorrow she'll probably take the same action or a different action on the way to what it is that she wants. And also we see she's a ruler. She's sitting on a throne. She has her staff, right? So this is someone who who's ruling. And what's interesting, guys, is like, I want you to think about the different rulers that came up for you, those authority figures. So we have her, we have the priestess, we have the three of pentacles, which is the mastery card, and we have the magician, and you also got the queen of cups. So... There's a lot of experts in here. You guys know more than you're leading on. You have more insight, more wisdom 
inside of your mind, inside of your spirit, inside of your heart, then you're allowing yourself to believe. So this group, this group right here that you're a part of, this is part of the mastery group. You're part of the expert group. You're part of the authority group. So you know what you're doing. You know the steps to get there. You're seeing things manifest and resolve for you. And I think that as I'm tuning into this as a whole, what you're maybe missing is faith. I feel like faith is huge for you. And I feel like so many of you don't have enough faith in yourself. You don't have enough faith that you will meet this goal, that you'll take those consistent actions. So I want you to start thinking about what can you do to have more faith in yourself. And faith can also mean trust, right? It also means trust. So we trust ourselves best when we are able to continually do what is best for ourselves and other people. When we continually take those actions that put us on the right track. So if you are losing my faith in yourself, my friend, I want you to really dive into one of the things I'm seeing in my mind is motivational, um, inspirational music. So whatever inspires you, whatever motivates you, I want you to start listening to more of that. Maybe make a playlist of really uplifting music. I want you to sing along to it. I want you to dance to it. But I want the lyrics, the lyrics are important, guys. So I want you to find songs in which the lyrics talk about confidence, about fulfilling some type of dream or destiny of not giving up. Like find songs that have the lyrics that uplift you and inspire you because music is a wonderful way to manifest. And what we sing out is what we bring into our world because songs have so much energy <laughs> they have so much energy because they get our words they get our emotions if we're dancing it gets our body involved and that is a ritual that can be a spell too but what it does is it also reprograms the mind like keep in mind that songs are repetitive right we tend to listen to the same songs over and over and over and over again and that implants something in our minds. Our mind will take that message and it will make that thing manifest. So if we're singing songs about heartbreak, we're going to experience heartbreak. If we're consistently singing songs about, um, you know, losing our friends or whatever it is, that's what we're going to manifest. However, if we're constantly singing songs about how we're confident, about how we're sexy, about how, um, you know, I, I can't think of any other examples right now, but that's what's going to manifest because that's the attitude we're going to have in ourselves. So really think about the music you're listening to and the lyrics that you're singing because that is your prayer that is your declaration to the universe, so make it a good one. The other way you can have more faith in yourself is to talk to yourself positively. So maybe if you um, are someone who likes to journal, you can write yourself uplifting letters. You can talk to yourself in a way that just makes you feel good about yourself. And then also by keeping your word to yourself. So make one small commitment. Think of one thing you're gonna do every day and maybe this is one of the things I do. So I've made myself a 30 day calendar because I'm trying to drink more water every single day. So I keep a checklist of how much water I'm drinking. And then at the end of the day, I get a sticker. I am highly motivated by stickers. Don't ask me why. I don't know. For some reason it works. So I put a sticker on my 30 day chart and that makes me feel good. And the more stickers I have, it means the more I've been consistent and that helps me to have faith in myself, but it also helps me to stick to that goal and make it more automatic because I'm being rewarded by stickers. So find the reward that works for you and rewards are really helpful and positive in rewiring your brain. 
that is it, group number one. I hope that you found this helpful. If so, please remember to give this video a like. Share it with your friends if you think that they'll find it helpful. And remember, if you'd like a personalized reading, I do offer those. You can go to my website at guidingechoes.com to schedule your reading. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey there, group number two. Those of you who chose the crystal quartz, this reading is for you. Let's go ahead and dive into your cards and see what you need to focus on. So the very first card I have for you is creativity. The second card that I have for you is abundance. So let me go ahead and show that off for you, abundance. And then the next card I have for you is personal power. So that's a cool yet intimidating card. So there are your cards right there. Again, we've got creativity, abundance, and personal power. So as I'm looking at your cards, it's interesting because abundance is coming up for you, but I feel like most of you who chose this pile are in an energy of lack. So you're thinking of abundance because you're lacking something. And then the creativity card, I feel like many of you are creative. I'm feeling like so many of you who chose this pile are depressed. And I feel like whatever it is that you're facing requires outside of the box thinking. You may have to get out of your own head. And with this creativity card, because again, with feeling depression and feeling lack, I'm also thinking that the creativity is very much about drawing, journaling, writing, just to kind of help you get out of your own thoughts, but also to help you express yourself in a way that is helpful, in a way that's helpful. Um, and then the last card we have with this personal power, this is about you wanting to take personal power. You feel like you don't have that right now. Um, so this is really interesting. So let's go ahead and dive into your tarot cards to see what they have to say about this. And remember, we're asking what you need to focus on. So this is about you. Yeah, you need to focus on getting your personal power back. So let's see what your cards have to say. Okay, so first of all, all of your cards came up in reverse, every single one of them which means that you have a big block. So we're gonna turn these right side up and we're actually going to read them that way. I feel like the reason they all came up in reverse was just to, yeah, was just to reiterate that th you're going through stuff. We'll just put it that way, you're going through stuff. Gosh, there's a lot of swords here. Okay, first card I have is the Eight of Swords. This is you feeling trapped, right? This is you feeling trapped by I want to say a lot of personal responsibilities, but you're overwhelmed. And so you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're not worth it. Whatever worth it means, you feel like you're just not worth it. Like this is deeply hurtful. And you just don't see any way out of your situation right now. So there is that element of, of hopelessness. What I'm also seeing too, because the element of swords is air. So air is about thoughts and communication and taking action. But we see in this card, you don't feel like you have the energy to take any action. And so this is, yeah, there's these thoughts. There's a lot of negative thoughts in your mind right now. And they're, you really get down on yourself a lot. So you, you do feel hopeless and this isn't just your thoughts, it's also because of how people are treating you, what they're saying to you, your environment, I feel is also playing a big part in this. Your environment's making you feel trapped. Um, the next card I have for you is the Ace of Swords. This card always reminds me of He-Man. I have the power! <laughs> so as we're looking at this card, this is a, this is a huge contrast. These are two completely different energies. So we see that you're feeling helpless and hopeless and um, like you don't have any power. I feel like this card is saying, act as if you felt you do. What would you be doing differently if you really felt you have the power? This is your He-Man card right here. <laughs> so I want you to just kind of think, how does it feel to say, I have the power? Say that out loud. I have the power. Does that feel good to you or do you feel weird saying it? I feel like a lot of you are going to be like, feels, that feels weird, Nicole. I'm not, I'm not liking this feeling. 
And if you don't like how it feels when you said that, it's because you don't believe it. And it feels like you're lying to yourself. I'm just trying to tune into this card a little bit more to see what else, because there's so much going on in this card. And she is looking at the sword and there's all these do are these doves? They're pigeons. There's all these birds. There's all these birds around her. There is lightning coming down to her sword, it looks like, or maybe the or lightning's coming from her sword. See, I told you it's He-Man. And <laughs> and she's looking at it. And I think she even she's blown away. She's holding her hat down. So there's action happening. Her sword is responsible for all the lightning going out, and she has all these birds around her. So I'm feeling like these birds represent. I want to say they represent the spirit world for you. So the birds are representing your angels and your guides and all of all of the support you have on the other side that you may not know you have. So that may be where your power is right now. If you don't have belief in yourself, if you don't have faith in yourself and you're truly feeling powerless, I want you to start feeling or thinking about what it would be like if you truly felt power emanating into your body from your angels, from your guides, from your ancestors. Maybe take a moment to, if you can or when you can, because obviously if you're listening to this while you're driving or you have to do something else, <laughs> wait till later to do this exercise I'm gonna give you. But when you can, when it's safe, close your eyes Imagine what it would feel like to have angels and guides around you sending you energy and absorb that energy and notice how it feels. I feel that for many of you, when you do this, because <sighs> I'm feeling you, I feel like for many of you, when you do this, you're, you're going to feel emotional because that's what I'm feeling, but you're going to feel like this, um, mm, it's like a dam breaking through. You're going to feel a breakthrough. So all those emotions that you've been holding in your chest, in your stomach, wherever it is, whew, it's going to come through. It's going to burst out and it's going to be good. And you're going to have to do this consistently because there's a lot that you need to let go of. There's a lot of emotions and memories and trauma and negative thoughts that are trapped in your body. And closing your eyes and allowing the angels and guides to send you energy and focusing on that and focusing on how it feels is going to let you take note of where you're feeling that in your body and where it needs to be released. So again, I feel like you're going to have to do that several times. And what happens is as these emotions break, as we have these breakthroughs, as, as we give them permission to come forward, what happens is now when the angels and guides are sending us energy and as we're receiving this universal energy, now we really are receiving power. So initially that energy may be used to release whatever toxic memories and whatnot are in our body. And after some time, now we're just going to be filled with good energy. We're going to be able to think more positively. We're going to be more focused. We're going to have more clarity. We're going to stand up for ourselves more. But first, we have to give ourselves permission to let go of those blocks. And we do need to ask for help from the spirit world, from our angels and guides. Because so many of you, like when I'm looking at your cards, there's you're mostly alone in all of these. And I, and I feel like that's how most of you feel. I feel like you, you are alone. So whether you're single, um, but for many of you, I feel like you're in relationships, but it's not safe for you to talk to your spouse about what you're feeling. Cause maybe he or she doesn't care. They're apathetic or they make things worse. There's just something going on in which you feel alone and and there's some of you who do have very supportive spouses, but, and while they're compassionate and they're sweet, they don't know how to empathize. They don't know how to make this better. They don't know what advice to give you. They don't know what to say. So while they're very sweet and they care about you and they love you, 
they're not they're not helpful they don't know how to help and so that can be that can be frustrating too but at least they love you right so for those of you who fall in that category it's nice to know that your spouse and partner loves you but you still feel alone so reach out to the other side ask them for help and then also be open to whatever resources open up for you in order for you to feel better, for you to gain your personal power back. Because as we start to connect with our angels, with our guides, with um, God or the universe, whatever title you want to put to the divine spirit that created us all, as we connect to that and as we start to make our needs known and we put our requests out there, the universe does respond. Our angels do respond and they will start to give us resources. It's up to us to take hold of them. Okay, so be mindful of the resources that come to you. The next card I have for you is the Six of Swords. And this is this card saying, get moving, get moving, take some type of action. So because we're tuning into this energy of feeling depressed and blah and just, you know, you, you don't have a lot of energy. This card's basically saying, take action anyway, move. And I feel like this is about even going for a jog, exercising, it's just doing those things that you don't want to do. And I want you to notice that this person here has a backpack with all these swords. <laughs> That's probably not the safest thing to have in a backpack. And his cat. So this is heavy. There's heaviness there. So it's not going to feel good when you initially take action, but you have to take some type of action. And again, for so many of you, I feel like this is exercise. I feel like this is going for a walk. I feel like maybe this is lifting weights. This is really just doing those things that you know you need to do for yourself that you've been putting off. It may even be something as simple as getting out of bed. For some of you, you're so depressed, you don't want to get out of bed. And even that feels like a chore. So get out of bed, <laughs> go for a walk, take care of yourself. Even though it feels heavy, you have to start taking some type of action. Okay. Um, the next card I have for you is the Wheel of Fortune. And this card is about karma. It's about consequences and results really when you think about it. So when this card is right side up, it means things are moving in your favor. When it's in reverse, not so much. Now remember, all of your cards initially came up in reverse, indicating that you have a huge block. Um, and then I turn them right side up. So the thing about reversals is when a card comes up in reversed, it's telling you like this thing, like, okay, we're gonna use this as the example. So when it comes up in reverse, it's saying this is a block. This is something you're having a hard time with. But the fact that it came up at all means if you take some type of action, you can make it go right side up. So I feel like this card is saying you're you're at a critical standpoint right now because you're at this point in your life where you probably feel like your actions don't matter because you feel like you don't entirely matter. And your cards are telling you, you absolutely matter, absolutely matter. And when we start taking action, when we exercise, when we do the things that we know we're supposed to do, it sends a message to our brains and to our body that what we do does matter. And if we start taking the right steps in the right direction, karma works in our favor. What's interesting to me about this card too is that she has this wheel and obviously because it's the wheel of fortune and it's got a house on it it's got money it's got the health symbol but this card of course it doesn't matter how many times you pull it it always it's always a house and a house represents so many things the house represents your actual environment and where you live um and for some of you i feel like the house actually represents your body and and your inner sanctuary. Take note of your inner world and clean house. <laughs> when it comes to your inner world, clean house, let those emotions free. And you know, that's what we were talking about earlier as far as connecting to your guides and divine energy is that's a form of cleaning house, letting those toxic emotions out, thinking about what you're thinking about and asking yourself, are these thoughts helpful or hurtful? 
that's a way of cleaning house. So it's time for you to clean house. And when you do that, and when you create this sanctuary in your mind that you can go to, to contemplate things or to talk to your angels or talk to your guides or talk to your deceased loved ones, that's also a way of creating a safe healing space inside of you that allows you to think things through. So clean house guys. And when that happens, karma is going to turn in your favor. Things are going to start going in your favor. It may be a slow shift, but it's still a shift. So be patient. Don't allow the wheel of fate to work against you. Start thinking the right thoughts. Start rewiring your mind. Start taking the right actions so that things can start working in your favor. Okay. All right. Next tarot card I have for you is the three of wands. And this girl has a wand and she's creating something. This is a really interesting take on this card. I don't know that I've ever pulled this one before, but she's looking down. She's looking down and she's using her magic for what? We don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she's creating her magic for, but her cat's very interested in what she's doing. So what's interesting to me is that the whole looking down thing is what's really is what's really calling me in this. And when you're creating your own magic, you need to be looking up. You need to be more confident looking up. And so that's what, that's really what I'm getting out of this. So maybe you're, maybe you really are working on manifesting. Are you, I don't even think like you're working on manifesting. Really. I think that you, I feel like you know what you want, but you're coming from such a place of lack from such a place of lack. So while maybe you are doing some form of magic and while you are holding some type of intention, it's weak because you're not coming at it from a place of confidence. You're coming from at it from a place where you lack confidence because again, it's looking down. She's looking, she's looking down. I need you looking up. I need you looking forward, okay? So, um. Yeah, very apparent that you do want to create something. You're hoping for abundance. You you need to gain your personal power back, but your own thoughts and actions have been working against you. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at your final cards and see what these have to say. So the first card I have for you is trust your path. And this card says, if you knew you would be supported, what would you do? Oh, I like that. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? I'm not going to give any advice on that because I think that's exactly the question you need to ask yourself. What's fascinating to me is this card came up for you and she feels helpless and worthless and unsupported. And this is saying, hey, you remember we were talking about your thought process. If you knew you would be supported and you are because your angels came up what would you do? What would you do? All right. Think about that. Next card I have for you is boundaries. Where do you need to establish boundaries? Guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been talking about boundaries <laughs> and uh, relationships in past, uh, in past videos. Boundaries are so important. Boundaries keep you safe from people who want to absorb your energy. They keep you safe from energy vampires. And look at this card like this. Look at all those hands reaching out to this woman. Again, it just reminds me of this. Like there's all these swords around. There's all these hands around, right? This is why you're feeling overwhelmed. There's all these people. And maybe you're thinking, Nicole, I'm an introvert. I don't really know that many people. I'm not around a lot of people. These are the people that are significant to you. It may be just one or two people that are relying on you and draining you. So you need to set boundaries. You need to set rules. And you need to let people know that they are not to cross that line. And the moment they do, there needs to be some type of a consequence. And of course, that consequence not is not going to be violent. But that consequence may be that you take a step back from them. That consequence may be that you have to say no more often to them, that you can no longer spend a lot of time with them. You have to protect yourself. And when you set boundaries, you have to make sure that you stick to them. And when you do that, you might feel guilty initially, 
because you may not have been taught how to set boundaries for yourself. Maybe there's people in your environment that have made you feel as if you're responsible for their wellness and their well-being and their happiness. And so when you take your power back and you start setting boundaries, they may get really upset when you start saying no. And you may feel really guilty when you say no. But that guilt will start to go away because you need to remember that when you say yes to someone else, you're essentially saying no to yourself. And the more you say no to yourself, the more you do feel worthless, the more you feel as if you can't trust yourself, the more you lose your confidence because you're losing yourself by saying yes to too many people and not taking care of your own energy, not taking care of yourself. Okay, so. Set boundaries. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? And your very last card, oh my gosh, I love this. Your very last card is Star Mother, and it says, How can you mother yourself? What a card to end with because I really think this is the key to everything. So, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> there is a technique called reparenting or remothering. And it is a technique that is especially fantastic for people who grew up in environments where they may not have had very loving parents or um, as you started to grow up, you just started to adopt very negative beliefs about yourself that weren't helpful. And so remothering and reparenting is when you speak to yourself in a way that a good mother or a good father would have spoken to you. So for example, a good mom would say things to her kid. A good mom will look down at her child and say, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. I just love you so much. I'm so lucky to be your mom. I'm so lucky to have you in my life. When you make a mistake, a good parent would say, you know what, honey, you tried your best and I'm so proud of you and you're going to do better next time. I just know it. I just know it. A good mom, a good parent is going to be comforting when you're sad, is going to be compassionate when you feel lost, is going to hug you and hold you when you need a safe space. And these are all things that you can do for yourself. Um, one of the ways that you can self-soothe when you need a hug and no one's around, like if your mom's not there to give you a big hug, you know, if that didn't happen, one of the ways that you can self-soothe, there's two actually. One is just by gently stroking your cheek. Um, this still releases dopamine. It still get, it still releases all of the things that a good hug, and um, endorphins and dopamine, just by gently stroking your cheek. And the other thing that you can do is actually Put your arms like this and squeeze your shoulders. This is self-hug. Um, to me, this feels restraining, so I don't particularly care for this. But for me, the, the cheek stroke when I remember to do that works just fine. But of course, there's other things you can do too. Like maybe, you know, maybe you find rubbing your hand feels good or holding your own hand feels good. Putting your hands over your chest feels good. Like this is an action for me that actually feels really warm and loving. So I'll, I tend to do that one a lot. Um, so those are way of remothering. So you can say, I love myself. I love you so much. Like, I'm so proud of you for coming this far. I'm proud of you for not giving up. I'm here for you. I am here to help you through this and I'm not going anywhere. That's how a good mom would speak to her child. That's how you can start talking to yourself. So take some time later today to think about what did you need your mom or your dad to say to you? What did you need to hear? And if your mom or dad were loving, and maybe they are loving, and maybe they're still around, but if that's not the case, think of what would a good mom say to you right now? What would a good dad say to you right now? What do you need to hear right now? And say that to yourself and start writing those out. Start writing down the things that you needed your mom to say or you needed your dad to say and know that you can get that from yourself and it is absolutely helpful your mind doesn't know the difference between you saying it to yourself and some outside source saying it to you 
So start saying those things that you need to yourself. And what you'll find is that it doesn't take long before you do start to feel supported, before your confidence does start to rise, before you find your personal power, before you don't feel as if you're surrounded by swords with no way out like you will start to feel like you have the power and things absolutely will start going your way these things take time they take time but i have found remothering to be an amazing approach that helps me to get there a little more quickly and i'm sure the same will be true for you as well so really think about that so again i want to end i want to like recap these last three cards um this is from the work your light oracle cards so if you're finding that if you like these cards and you want a positive oracle deck that really um i want to say entices you to think for yourself in an inspirational motivational and positive way this is the deck i recommend I really think this is an amazing self-help tool, okay? So again, your cards are trust your path. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? Boundaries, where do you need to establish boundaries? And star mother, how can you mother yourself? By the way, I also feel like I need to say a good mom would make you eat healthier food. <laughs> so also think about all the ways that a mom, a good mom, would help you on your life path. So she would probably cook you healthy meals. She would tell you she loves you and she's proud of you. She would encourage you to go after your dreams and live your best life. It's a lot of things a good mom would do. So that is it for this group. I do hope that you found this reading helpful. If you'd like a personalized reading, you can visit my website at guidingechoes.com and schedule your reading there. And also, if you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumb up. You can leave a comment down below if you'd like. And if you know of other people who might find these pick a card readings helpful, please share this with them. I mean, it's free, so the price is right, right? <laughs> so thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, group number three, or those of you who chose this lovely pink heart, this reading is for you. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what we have. So the very first card I have for you is peace. Here we have a lotus flower with all these beautiful light orbs flowing right out of it, or maybe it's flowing into it. I don't know. I guess it depends on your perception, right? Uh, and then we have, ooh, spiritual awakening. How exciting. So you guys are on a spiritual journey. And we have oh, determination. Look at all those fish going upstream. So what is it that you guys are working on? So right away when we're asking what should you focus on, spiritual awakening, right? We also have, you know, while this says peace, what I'm really focused on is this lotus flower because with these two together, ah, your spiritual gifts are opening. How very fun. For some of you, they've already opened and I think that they're maybe changing and so you're not quite sure what to make of that because that can happen sometimes. So like you may be very clairvoyant, which means that you're used to getting prophetic dreams and information comes to you in your dreams or in, in daydreams and uh, visions. And as time goes by, you may notice that that may still be present, but now your clairsentience is acting up. So now you're feeling a lot of emotions. <laughs> you're starting to feel overwhelmed in this heart chakra, and maybe that's something you're not used to. And so whenever we become willing to work with our different clairs and to work with psychic abilities, we usually get to a point where they start to evolve. And when that happens, we're like, I don't entirely understand what's going on here. I don't know. This is interesting, right? So that's what I see what's going on with you guys. And with this determination card, I love this because I think you guys are already determined to get to the next level in your spiritual awakening. I think that this is actually very important to you. So let's go ahead and dive into your tarot cards and see what they have to say. Um, so the very first card that I have for you is the queen of wands. You are a boss. You are a boss. So she's extremely confident. She's intelligent. She's insightful. She's intuitive. This girl knows how to work her magic. 
And I also kind of love that she's got this dragon near her and she's got this cat that's like playing <laughs> with that flower that fell. So this is a card of abundance, but it's also a card of confidence. So you're confident in yourself. I'm liking this. So you can't, you're, man, what you should focus on is like we we're saying your spiritual gifts, your spiritual opening or your spiritual awakening and how things are evolving for you. But also just having that confidence focusing on that confidence and how you want to use your magic, how you want to use your, your new psychic powers. Next card I have for you is the six of wands in reverse. This tells me that maybe you're not very comfortable with getting attention for these psychic abilities. So whatever your abilities are, you're kind of keeping them quiet. You may talk to a couple people that you trust, but for the most part, you're not ready to go out into the world and be like, hey, guess what, guys? I'm telepathic. Hey, yo, I'm a Reiki healer. <laughs> like, hey, guys, I'm an empath. Just saying you're not loud about it, right? You're keeping it to yourself. And there's two reasons for this. One is I think you're just not interested in other people knowing your business. <laughs> so you're just like, people don't need to know this about me. Um, and for some of you, you're just really shy. Some of you are extremely <laughs> shy and introverted. So being loud about your gifts makes you uncomfortable because you don't necessarily want people going to you asking you to, um, to use your, your spiritual abilities for whatever. And also this is just intimately personal for a lot of you because this is new for a lot of you. And so you're still trying to figure out what your spiritual gifts are. Uh, I feel like some of you are, are a little confused by them because it seems like so many different gifts are awakening for you. So you're like, wait, I don't know if I'm clairvoyant or clairsentient. I don't know if I'm telepathic. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I am. <laughs> so there is some confusion there because you're still figuring it out. So um, I kind of like this attitude. I love that you're confident in yourself. I love that you know you're magical. I love all of this, but you're also not boastful. You're also not prideful. You're just kind of keeping this to yourself and staying low key about it. So I like it. Um, next card I have for you is temperance. Temperance is all about having a balanced life. So that's why she's standing on the one foot. You know, she's got this whole yoga thing going on. She is, of course, very balanced. And so I feel like this is, I, gosh, I just feel like you guys have this amazing balance. And also when we're asking what should you focus on, it's saying, yeah, that find that balance between living this physical journey and still being in that spiritual world. So finding that balance between, um, yeah, between your spiritual life and your physical one. And I feel like so many of you already have this down. You may not feel like it. <laughs> That's the thing. You may not feel like it. Uh, sometimes when your spiritual awareness and awakening first starts, it can, it can give you a bit of a jolt. So you may feel like things are out of whack. Trust that they're not. Trust that everything's balanced. Trust that everything is as it should be. Because looking at your cards, I'm telling you, everything is as it should be. You're managing all of this actually really well. Next card I have for you is the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. So when it's right side up, this is a woman who's just relaxing. She knows all of her needs are met. She's cool. She's reading her books. She's got her, her glass of wine there. She's living the life, right? So in reverse, I feel like this is saying it's time to hustle. <laughs> it's time to hustle. What's funny is like this hustle, I feel like you just have good energy. I feel like the weather's becoming so nice outside that you don't want to be this person who's just outside chilling, reading a book. Like you need action. You want to go out and go for a run. You want to hike. That's, that's what I'm actually seeing in my mind for a lot of you guys is going for a hike, being out in nature. So you do want to be outside. That part is correct, but you don't want to just be sitting down doing nothing. Um, and so what's interesting about that is movement is so good for us. I'm feeling convicted as I'm saying this because I've been working so much that I haven't been exercising and going out hardly. <laughs> also, when I'm done with this, I should probably go for a walk. Uh, I'll probably change my clothes first because this would be a weird thing to go for a walk in in my neighborhood. I don't need that type of attention here, right? Um, <laughs> so this is about going out and being with nature, going for those hikes, getting active because the more active our physical bodies are, the healthier and stronger our spiritual gifts actually become. 
And it makes sense because the more active we are, the more focused our brain is. The more clarity we have, the less brain fog. And so exercise is good, not just for our physical well-being, but also for our spiritual well-being too. And when we have a clear mind and we're able to focus on things in our physical life, it means that we actually are able to have more control over our spiritual awareness and our spiritual gifts as well. So get out there, exercise, get some movement going. It's going to be amazing. And the next card I have for you, the last card in the tarot set, because I do have a couple more oracle cards for you guys after this, is the Three of Cups. So this is about celebrating. This is about having a good time with your gal pals, with your guy friends, whoever your community is. It's about celebrating. So um, for some of you, I feel like these are just... I'm seeing so many different social engagements coming up for you. So I'm seeing like what looks like a wedding reception. I'm feeling for some of you, this is maybe like a high school reunion or just getting together with college buddies again. But reunion is what's coming up and probably some birthday parties. So get out there and socialize. Get out there and have fun. I feel like the reason this came up for you is because sometimes when we become more involved in spiritual things, we start to get really deep and heavy when it comes to things like the afterlife, when it comes to like star seas and Pleiadians and vortexes and the fifth dimension and astrology. <laughs> like there are so many different places to go to when you start diving into all these different spiritual beliefs. And we find ourselves wanting to talk about these things with other people. And the deeper we get, the more separated we might feel from other people. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. So I feel like the, your reading is saying, absolutely, pay attention to your spiritual awareness. Dive into it. Have fun with it. Go out there. Be active. But don't forget your friends. You don't have to leave them behind. You can still go out and have fun. You can still drink. In fact, alcohol came up for you twice, guys. Look at that. I mean, as long as you don't have, you know, any issues or substance abuse issues or, or drinking issues and saying, go out, have a glass of wine, have some fun with your friends. And if wine's not for you, have some coffee, have some tea, have some water. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but celebrate, go out and celebrate, have fun with people, keep your community close. They don't have to be a spiritual community. You don't have to separate yourself from people just because you're becoming more spiritual and you're interested in these philosophies. The lives of other people still matter. You can, you can be a spiritual person and still be into fashion and still be into, I want to say gossip, but not the bad type of gossip. You know, the, the I want to say the type of gossip where you're not talking crap about other people, but when you're just, I don't know, talking about your own life, uh, if you're into gossiping about celebrities or whatever, you know, whatever your deal is, like, just, you can still be that person, you can still be those interests, have those interests, and the reason I bring that up is because I think there is, or not, I think, I know that a lot of times there's this temptation to judge people on their interests when we are awakening because we start to see everything else as maybe being shallow, we start to see material things as being shallow. We start to see the pursuit of money as shallow, you know, whatever it is. And the truth is, they're not shallow. They're just different interests that we have in this realm. And those interests are necessary to allow us to connect with other people. And they're necessary because it... it it's what we need to survive here, <laughs> right? So we need food, we need water, we need money, we need clothes. So we might as well enjoy good restaurants, nice clothing. Um, you might as well have fun on our pursuit of money. You know, those things aren't shallow. They're necessary. Have fun with your community, guys. You don't have to break away from your friends. I mean, unless they're toxic and they're narcissists or something like that. But keep your friends close. Have fun with them. You don't have to discuss spiritual things with them. I mean, you can if you want, but for many of you, you don't want to. You want to keep it to yourself, and that's fine. All right, let's move on to your last three cards. I have birthing a new age, birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. So again, totally goes in alignment with your spiritual awakening, with, <laughs> with your lotus opening, 
Um, so birthing a new age, birthing new creation. So think about the world that you want to create for yourself. But I feel like this is so much bigger. I think this is about you contemplating your place in this world and your impact in this world. What type of impact do you want your life to have on others, on humanity? And remember, we change the world one life at a time one word at a time, one whisper at a time, one encouragement at a time, one soul at a time. So think about the world that you want to create. If heaven were on earth, what would that look like? And what actions, what behaviors, what thoughts, what prayers, what meditations would be necessary to bring that forward? You, my friend, are playing a role in bringing in this new age. All right, this new age, this new world. The next card I have for you is mirror and it says who or what is triggering you? Some of you came up with that answer right away. I felt that you're like, oh, let me tell you. I know exactly who's triggering. I know exactly what's triggering me. So yeah, who or what is triggering you? <sighs> I don't know that you really need to take a lot of action on that. It's more like you just need to be aware of it because when you're aware of it, you might be able to have more control over the trigger. Sometimes just bringing something into our awareness helps us to change it. But if you do find that there is someone or something who triggers you and, and it's a big trigger, you may have to do some work on that you may have to find some calming exercises. So like a really easy one is to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, as if you're blowing through a straw, and do that six times. And you'll start to find that the trigger releases. You'll start to find that you're not feeling so stressed out. And after the interaction with this person who triggers you, and that interaction may even be in your head. It may be that, that someone comes to mind and you get into this imaginary fight with this person that's not even in your life anymore. When that happens, you can still stop and you take a nice deep breath in and breathe out. And so the goal here is to figure out how to release the emotional connection that's tied to that person or tied to that thing, okay? And... um you know, there's lots of different things you can do for that. There's EFT, emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping, where you tap on this meridian, different meridian points on your body, like the top, the head is one. So you can look into EFT. Um, lifespan integration therapy has been very helpful for me. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to do that. But for now, maybe just focus on the breath and then later on find different ways to move um, past that. All right. And the next card I have for you is... Imrama. I don't know what that is. I-M-R-A-M-A. -A. Where are you being called to journey to? Okay, there's two things coming up on this one. One is that I feel this is an actual journey. So for some of you, I feel that you're actually being called to go to Egypt or to go someplace where ancient spirituality was a big deal. I'm very much feeling that for some of you. And for the rest of you, this is about your inner journey. Where is that pulling you? These spiritual gifts that are opening up for you, the psychic awareness, where is that pulling you? Pay attention to it. And the way that you do that is think about the things that you're curious about. You know, I have people come to me all the time and they're like, I'm not sure if I'm psychic or I think I might be a medium or I don't know what my gifts are. And the way for you to hone in on that is to ask, what are you curious about? What gets you excited when you think about that realm? When you think about all the spiritual abilities, when you think about all the different dimensions, when you think about things like aliens and angels and Bigfoot, you know, whatever is out there, fairies, ancestors, what gets you excited? And whatever gets you excited is what is pulling your heart. That is pulling your heartstrings. So that's part of your inner journey. That is the journey you're being called to explore. So give yourself permission to explore. And you don't have to keep questioning it. 
and I get it. I was there too when my gifts started opening up. I was questioning everything. So <laughs> I figured it out, as you can tell. But don't question it. Just research it. Just go after it. And if after a while, let's say that you decide you want to dive into tarot cards or oracle cards. They just seem fascinating to you. So you're like, all right, I'll take a course. I'll figure this out. And you get a week into it or a couple months into it. You're like, you know this just isn't for me, that's fine. You move on to the next thing. A lot of times what happens is people will, and I see this happen all the time, people will get into something because it does call to them, like they're curious about psychic mediumship or astrology or whatever it is. They'll dive into it for a little bit and it's overwhelming to them or life happens or it just doesn't click with them. So they get discouraged, they move on to something else. But what happens is that curiosity comes up again and when they go back to that practice the second time around and sometimes the third time around it suddenly clicks they get it it sticks you dive into a spiritual practice whether it's working with oracle cards it's astrology it's mediumship it's it's clairvoyance it's not for you that's fine move on to something else and eventually you're probably going to find that you go back and when you go back it's going to be that much better for you. You're going to enjoy it that much more. So that is it for your reading. I do hope that you find it helpful. And if you would like a personalized reading with me, you can visit my website at guidingechoes.com. Also, if you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like up. And if you feel so inclined, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.